It's the Daily 304's presentation of famous people, places, and events that shaped West Virginia. Welcome to the History Project. Today we take a look at the glass industry. It is said that people in glass houses shouldn't cast stones. But in West Virginia, the glass industry was here because of the stones. More to the point, Ariscany sandstone, which, when crushed, becomes the fine sand needed for making glass. This sandstone is seen in outcroppings and often contains that other component of glassmaking, natural gas, used to melt the sand. It was a hand meat glove revelation for the Mountain State. America's glass industry moved from the Northeast and landed in West Virginia in the late 19th century, with a large concentration in the Monongahela Valley. Pressed glass was largely made in Clarksburg at factories such as Hazel Atlas and Anchor Hawking, and in Morgantown at the Seneca and Morgantown Glass Companies. In Weston, more stemware was made than anywhere else in the world. The area was a font of glassmaking innovation. And speaking of innovation, Michael J. Owens of Point Pleasant left school at 10 to work as an apprentice at a glass factory in Wheeling. At 29, he moved to Toledo, Ohio to work in the factory of Edward Lebby. Owens patented a machine which could mass produce bottles and Lebby made him his partner for Lebby Owens Glass, later Owens, Illinois which would have major facilities in Fairmont, Clarksburg, Charleston, and Huntington. As with most of America's heavy industry, cheaper imports and the expense of renovating manufacturing facilities brought the state's and the nation's glass industry down to a shadow of its former glory. Today, glass museums in Weston and Wheeling pay tribute to a time when West Virginia was celebrated for its heart of glass.